The film I have chosen to deconstruct is A Clockwork Orange by director Stanley Kubrick. This is a brilliant example of a psychological horror as it follows the story of young Alex, a teenager obsessed with ultraviolence, rape and drugs as he is sent on a programme to reform his ways, which leads to chilling repercussions. The film is based on one of my favourite novels, Anthony Burgess, A Clockwork Orange, who filmed sticking to the storyline fairly soundly. It was produced by Warner Brothers in 1971, however was withdrawn from viewing due to its disturbing nature for 27 years, making it difficult to see the film in the United Kingdom. In this film, there are no opening credits after the title is displayed. In 1971, this was considered unusual, but was a trademark of the director, Stanley Kubrick, a master of psychological horrors, also the director of The Shining. Straight away, in the first few seconds, the screen flashes bright red, a colour associated with danger and aggression. The non-diegetic music begins and slowly builds. The soundtrack is Music for the Funeral of Queen Mary March by Henry Purcell, which is disturbing, hinting at the theme of death within the first scene. It starts with low, echoing noises, with a droning boom summoning the audience's attention. The echoes become louder and the dramatic melody comes in. The effect of this music builds tension and mystery with a foreboding sense for what's to come. This all forms emphasis on the entrance of the first title. The first title shown is the production company, Warner Brothers, showing who this film is produced by and where the money to finance it came from. This is in large white capitals and is the centre of the screen showing its importance. Underneath this, in smaller text but still in capitals and a bold font, is the owner of the production company, again showing us where the money for the production came from. Below this, in lowercase lettering, is the words presents, which implies this production company is the force driving this movie entirely, and the fact it is presenting is of less importance than its presence in the production. The title screen switches again in time with a rise and fall in the soundtrack showing the significance of the change. This change is also emphasised by the shocking colour change of the screen from bright red to bright blue. This gives the movie a psychedelic edge as the colours are bright and garish, foreboding the drug use in the storyline. This title says, a Stanley Kubrick production, all in the large white bold font, unlike the last title screen where some text was smaller. The name Stanley Kubrick is central, showing his importance. The fact that it is described as his production shows the importance of the director in the marketing and production of this film. This is the final title screen before the main production and shows the title of the film, A Clockwork Orange. This is in the same large white bold font as the other titles and is central promoting its importance. Each title screen had exactly the same on-screen time as the others, showing no bias towards a certain aspect of the filmmaking. This title screen has the copyright details at the bottom of the screen, unlike the others, showing that this is in fact the title of the film. Again, the transition happened when there is a rise in the music and a dramatic colour change on the screen from the blue back to the red. The title screen flashes to the image of the main protagonist, Alex, staring straight into the camera with a creepy, obsessive look upon his face. He is looking up from beneath his hat, which is covering the tops of his eyes, adding mystery. He has fake eyelashes on one eye, but not the other, connoting he is out of the ordinary, a unique character, or maybe there is two sides to him. It is like how his thuggish behaviour and his passionate love for classical music could be considered to be two opposing sides to his character. The music continues and he does not blink, which is unnatural and eerie. zooms out from a close shot of Alex's face to a long shot of Alex and his droogs, his gang that joined him in causing havoc at night. Alex is the only of the four characters that is looking directly at the camera, showing it is his story to be told, and that he is the only one aware that the audience is watching. The other three look dazed and stare into nothingness, all slumped against the wall, showing the effect of the drugs they have taken upon them. They are all wearing matching costumes, showing some sort of unity in their gang. Alex is the only one of them to have his feet up on the table, showing his authority over the group. The table is in the shape of a naked woman in a sexual stance. The fact that Alex has his feet upon her and one of his drugs has put his milk onto the table shows their lack of respect for women, shown also throughout the film in their use of language towards women and the graphic rape scenes throughout. The woman's hair is also bright green, contrasting with the grey walls showing again the psychedelic environment they are in. The writing on the wall of the bar is also in 50s hippie font, connoting drug use. It is at a sloping angle mirroring the zoned out expressions of the characters.
The camera zooms out even further to show more naked women statues with bright coloured hair and more people in the milk bar, all with similar zoned out expressions. Alex is still staring into the camera. There is what it would seem a bouncer stood in the corner in an aggressive stance, with his arms crossed, connoting that it can be a violent bar. There is no movement in the room apart from the camera zooming out. There is also no editing involved, as it is all taken in one long shot. This emphasises the zoned out feelings of everyone in the room and adds to the eeriness. This is a typical camera work of a psychological horror, as it shows creepy drawn out camera work building suspense. There was me, that is Alex, and my three droogs. That is Pete, Georgie, and Dim. And we sat in the Corova milk bar, trying to make up our Razoo dogs what to do with the evening. The Corova milk bar sold milk plus. Alex introduces himself and his droogs. His voice is sophisticated, but also sadistic, with an air of malice in it, connoting he is up to no good. He takes his time pronouncing his words, emphasising the eeriness of the bar. The language in the film is taken from the book in which Anthony Burgess came up with his own futuristic language. The gang can't make up their mind what to do in the evening, showing their boredom, which leads to their bad doing.